Five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Two Fandom Friends, the not so stereotypical, stereotypical nerd podcast. I am your host, Salva, and joining me as always is the lovely Chantel. Hi, everyone. Hi, how are you? <laughs> oh my god, this week. <laughs> It has been literally hell. Feels... Oh, there we go. There. I feel better now. Okay. Sorry. I'm comfortable. Yeah. Uh, school is kicking my ass. I have so many assignments due. Like, it is absolutely ridiculous. I have. Okay. So mm-hmm. I just finished having an assignment due on Sunday. Yes. Had an assignment due on Monday. Yeah. Had one due today, which I finished extra early because my Wi Fi has. Um, been doing weird stuff with the drop boxes yeah um because i, oh, I know you were you were saying on sunday when you submitted your thing it, it, took, w- 10 it took like 10 minutes to upload and y- y- you mm-hmm. were like a minute over the due date i honestly yeah. feel like if you email your prof and just explain the whole situation i'm sure it shouldn't be a problem i mean at this point i don't care enough because i have so much other <laughs> shit to do like okay so i had the assignment due today yeah. right I have another assignment due Sunday. I have an assignment due Monday. I have an assignment due Tuesday. I have an assignment due Wednesday. Okay. I have another assignment due the following Monday. I have mm-hmm. another assignment due the Wednesday. I have another assignment due the Friday and then one on Sunday. And then um, it's almost pretty much exam time. Yeah. By that point. Oh my God. I, I'm I so don't, screwed, dude. <laughs> I don't have that much to do. I got to be honest with you. Um, I don't even think I have, ex- no, that's a lie. I have, I think one exam at least, no two. Um, I have, okay, to make matters worse, they released the exam schedule, okay? Yes. I have an exam, uh-huh. wait for this, because you're going to like cry for me. Oh no, uh, I see it coming. I have an exam on the 12th and an exam on the 19th. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> The 12th, uh, December 12th is Chantel's birthday, for those of you yeah. who don't know. Yeah, I have an exam on my birthday. That sucks. It does suck. I was hoping I, to sleep. <laughs> I get lucky with my birthday. It's the end of April, April 27th, um, in case anyone wanted to mark their calendars. Um <laughs> But I have a mark on my calendar. Yes, I know you do. <laughs> um, but my birthday always falls the week after exams finish. So I, I know you're so lucky. And like, and even then, I don't I don't have it. This is my last semester. I don't have any more exams after this. Time. Remember the days where um th- uh, there was a Star Wars movie that came out every year on your birthday? Yes. Oh my god. If only the, if only we had that for you, then we can go out and celebrate after. I know. With but lots we, of drinking cuz I'm going to need it cuz it's a yeah. difficult exam. <laughs> um yeah so that's that's been your week my week has been been amazing um I know I'm so jealous (laughs) so as I mentioned last week I have been applying for co-op placements internships for um January and I got one and I accepted I don't know if I can actually say the company name I I still have paperwork to do but um Yeah, if you follow me on LinkedIn, I'll post it on my LinkedIn, like what it is. I just don't think I can say it on this platform. But yeah, I'm I'm set for next semester. It honestly was a very hard decision because it it really was up to two. Um the I had an interview up until like the other day um with someone and I I had to email and I I like cried inside because I'm like I already accepted to the other place but she seems so fun and she's like I'm like so happy that you are like doing this process and you know so I had to email her but on the bright side she had emailed me back and said if there's um, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn and hopefully in the future we'll work together. There'll be that's an opportunity. Good. You're networking. So. There we go. You're I'm networking. networking. That's that's all networking is on LinkedIn. If you uh I don't go on LinkedIn. I have a LinkedIn, but I don't really go on it. And it's really funny because every once in a while I'll get a couple of um 
I'll get an email that'll be like, you were in three LinkedIn searches this week. Like, what are they looking for? <laughs> Literally, the only thing on my LinkedIn is my name. <laughs> okay, that's that is it. so strange. Yeah, there's nothing funny. else. And I'm like, how how is I in your search? That is is my name that like important to you? <laughs> Uh, anyways yeah so I've been having a great week um my midterms are over just assignments are due but I don't have yeah. nearly as much as assignments as you the, do um the highlight of my week was when I met with my professor about an assignment I have to do um because my professor wants us all to meet with them to make sure that we're like on our way with this assignment I like professors and that do that. I got me be too. Honest. And yeah. my professor seemed very impressed. So I felt very good about myself. That's good. So that was like, that was like my highlight of the week. Okay. Which is kind of <laughs> sad, but you know what? I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> okay. The professor was like, you're good. You don't need to do any more research. Go ahead and start writing. And I'm like, yes, yes. Victory. <laughs> Victory. Can <start. laughs> I can finally start on this assignment, which I've kind of already started before, but you know what? <laughs> we just got a head start, you know? Who, who needs approvals? <laughs> well, with all the assignments that I have, I kind of. You know what? Yeah. I don't blame you. I would have started too. Yeah. So, all right. Shall we uh, continue we on have, it to Moon Knight? Do we have any updates from last week? No, I don't think so. Um, not that I know of. No, least. I don't think there were any updates that we needed to uh, address. Um, well, okay. Henry Cavill is no longer the Witcher. <laughs> mm hmm. I'm so sad. I okay, literally, when I found out, I know this is gonna sound weird, mm -hmm. but I I was so angry that I was like, I'm gonna watch The Witcher, but then I was like, no, I can't watch The Witcher because I was so angry. So instead, I watched Anola Holmes. I watched the first one and the second one. We that's I how mean, angry I was. We still get one more <laughs> season with him, so I'm I'm happy about that. But I am very upset. I it's <sighs> okay. I'd much prefer him as the Witcher than as Superman. I think here's the thing about Superman. I think he wasn't given enough of a chance with Superman. And from interviews that I've seen with him, it sounds like they're going more of the um, happy uh, Boy Scout type Superman that we know and love rather than the mm -hmm. American Rudy, um yeah which oh, which superman so <laughs> which I, I like but also here's the thing i still much mm -hmm. prefer him as the witcher yes because he is still a really good actor like i loved him as sherlock holmes in enola holmes he's very good in that movie. i loved him <laughs> i love that movie okay um his hair was amazing just have to say that like <laughs> wow okay anyways I still think I would prefer The Witcher because there are a lot of actors who can do Superman. I don't feel like there's a that lot of true. actors who can play um, I Geralt think, in though, The Witcher. I think, though, there was a lot of things going on behind the scenes of The Witcher. Like, we heard, um, I think it was the, was it the, the creator of the show that came out and said that most of the writers on the show... Um, haven't hate, read the books well they, yeah, hate, they and hated, hated the, the book books. and they hated the games and they mm -hmm. just like and henry cavill from the very beginning has always said they're going to try to stick to as close as possible to the books because he loved the books which and is, wanted which to is, be very faithful to to the uh the books which is fair for him yeah like i get that for him I'd still prefer him as <laughs> as the witcher because like okay you know, i don't know if you've ever watched um Oh god, I don't remember the name of the show, but it's like Lois and Superman or something like that, where Tyler oh, Hecklin plays Superman. Yeah, I've, I've, Tyler yeah. Hecklin's not a bad Superman. Like he could easily, he could easily <laughs> heard, be Superman. I've heard a lot of people say that he was very good, and he he. Uh, I mean, I've only watched a couple of episodes, but still, yeah, I'd much prefer Henry Cavill <laughs> <laughs> as Gerald than as Clark. Can I say so? So my my mother, who um, we all love now, um, <laughs> she, she um, 
she's really gotten more into the stuff that we watch now. Like I, when um, I think the season two of Witcher came out, she uh, binge watched the entirety of season one and two in like mm-hmm. three days. So she immediately like loved the show. And when I told her that Henry Cavill will no longer be playing Geralt, she was like, and I told her Liam Hemsworth is going to be in it. She immediately goes, what, what now they're going to call it the hungry witcher. <laughs> so so now I have that in my head. I'm like, oh God, now we're just gonna be calling it the Hunger Richer for Thursday <laughs> fourth. Um here's the yeah, thing though. My Liam mother was upset too. <laughs> Liam Hemsworth is not a bad actor. I'm not angry about them choosing him. Mm-hmm. I'm just angry with the fact that I hate when shows change actors halfway through when they've already got such a good actor playing the character. Because they're either going to do one to two things, okay? <laughs> they're either never going to mention it. <laughs> Not a single person is going to mention the fact that he looks completely different mm-hmm. and sounds completely different. Or it's going to be a running joke throughout the entire series where one character is going to be like, you look different. There's something different about you. Oh, my God. I, I honestly, I just... The best thing, ignore it. Just just don't mention it. Don't say nothing about it. Because there was one show. Okay, I'm not going to say the show name because it pisses me off so much. There was one show where they had the actor change like halfway through. Because like the dude went off to boarding school or some stupid shit. <laughs> and okay. he comes back. Okay, completely different. Okay, completely different. Okay, like half a foot taller too. And um. And only one person was like, wow, you look completely different. Board school really did, like, change you. And he, like, in a completely different voice that was, like, slightly deeper, he was like, yeah, it did. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, no, just just ignore it. Just ignore it and, like... like you I know feel how- like it needs... Okay, here's the thing. For me, with things like this, it needs to be addressed... But it needs to be dressed in such a way that's believable. Like, have it be like, oh, he was cursed and now he's got, like, a pretty face so no one can walk past him without, like, looking at him or something. Like, you know, and like... The devil has a pretty face. What are you talking about? Okay, yeah, he has a pretty face, but he's also way more intimidating, in my opinion. Yeah, but that's what made him really sexy in the show. I gotta be honest, the okay. only reason why I started yes. watching the show was because I saw that picture of him in the bathtub and okay. then i'm like mm-hmm, yeah okay but any day. here's the th- and then i fell in love here's with the thing Jennifer. my my thing is they have to like they can't just like not address it because it will bother me <laughs> i won't be able to watch it like they need to have something there to be like yeah like he got into a fight with the dragon and then the dragon like changed his face or something so that no one would be able to recognize him i mean like they is, need it is a fantasy world so it, it could be believable exactly so i'm like i need i yeah i can't just have a random face change i hate it hate it when tv shows do that okay all right well that that's our um five that's my rant about that that's our rant about uh about that um yeah Anyway, right, also, moving you know on. What I also heard someone sorry just we're going back to this you know what i also think um happened um what maybe uh they don't have the same budget as they did starting mm. out and um with the dough that henry cavill was um getting from it maybe they're like it's not worth it anymore so we're just gonna bring in someone who is still well known but like won't cost us as much yeah and with especially with netflix shows they tend to like focus more on the first season listen i noticed like the first seasons always get such a big budget and then every season after that is like you know they're always like whatever and a lot of netflix shows that are really really good get canceled after the first season and at the height of their popularity there's only been a few shows stranger things bridgerton the witcher but okay but bridgerton's only got two seasons there are not a lot of they wow there are (laughs) a lot of netflix shows sorry can you tell my brain isn't fully functioning right now um 
there are there are a lot of sh- Netflix shows where they have a first season, a lower budget second season, and then just gets worse and worse from there. Um, and they eventually get canceled because the fan base drops off because the quality of the show is yeah. getting worse and worse. I'm like just the only one saying they do not do that with Bridgerton because it's like, so good. The only like there are very few shows and like the only ones I can think of off the top of my head, like literally right now sitting here without going through Netflix. The only ones that I can really think of is um Stranger Things and The Witcher. The Witcher is the only one that I know of where the quality hasn't dropped, even though there's only two seasons in. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess Bridgerton too, but Bridgerton doesn't need as many like special effects. Yeah, it's um, definitely special like effects. that that costume budget must be like really good. I got to be honest. It would it would have to be. <laughs> yes. But they also <laughs> don't need as many like special effects. And yeah. that's where a lot of this the budgets for these shows are going. Yeah. Um so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's our, All right. That's our piece let's, on, on that. Let's uh, move on to a different platform from Netflix. We're going to over to Disney Plus where you can watch Disney Moon Knight. Plus. Um, we watched Moon Knight uh, episode, episode two. Because there is only one season right now. Um, so yeah, last week we talked about episode one. So if you haven't watched that already, go watch it. And then go watch back. it. And then come back. Um, we'll wait. <laughs> we'll wait. We'll just, we'll just sit here. We'll wait. Spoilers. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. You have been warned. Spoilers. 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 Wait, okay. I did a whole spoiler thing. I, well, well, you know what? We, they, can like have, they can have extra spoiler warning. Extra time okay. to um, stop watching if they don't want to be spoiled for okay. Moon Knight episode do, 2. Do Spoilers! You think, do you think they're back? Do you think they're back from watching season, the first episode? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah, okay. I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we watched Moon Knight episode two. A lot happened in this episode. A lot more action packed than yes. the first one. I loved it. I mean, and, I loved this whole show in general, yeah. but I loved it. Can I just say how bad I feel for Steven? Oh my god. He I literally was, literally was just oh. like thrown into it. And every time people are like, Where's the scarab? Where's the scarab? Or like Layla was like, Your mark, your mark. She's he was like the whole time, like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. I'm freaking like, out right now. You could hear my heart breaking for Steven like throughout the entire <laughs> show. I was like, I felt so bad for him. And yeah. I was like, poor Steven. Like, even when, like, Layla was like, where's the suit? And he's like, what suit? What is this happening? Po- yeah, and then, like, I feel so bad for him. And then, like, oh, my God, Layla, like, I, I get why she did this. Layla's like, I love her, okay? Yes. So this is not, like, we me saying Layla. that I don't love her because I absolutely love Layla. But, like, She's the fact queen. that when the police came, she just, like, abandoned Steven to them. <laughs> <laughs> she just like peaced out she was like i i'm gone but i mean to be fair she did come back for him after so she just did, found yeah. that i just found that very like very funny poor steven's there freaking out and she just pieces out she's like all right that's my cue i'm leaving <laughs> <laughs> i'll be back for you but i'm leaving i'm <laughs> like, leaving I do. Um, so, okay, let's go. Let's go to the beginning of the episode. Um, obviously, we know he basically the whole incident in the bathroom or the toilets, as they call mm-hmm. them. Um, that happened. He goes into work and he sees like the caution tape, and he talks to the security guard. And he goes to the security guard. He goes, "I, I think I know." Like, I, I, I <laughs> yes. So he goes, right? And he, he turns to the security guard and he goes, listen, mate, I you're going to see some, like, Area 51 shit happening right now. Yeah. But, like, I need you to believe me. Like, it wasn't my fault. I found that so funny because he was building it up. So <laughs> he was like, bro, like, you got to prepare yourself. You got to, like, understand, like... Oh, God. And then they watch the clips and it's like... Where it's they watch literally the him just running around. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like try a different angle try a different angle and then like i find then it at the end when um mark comes out like 
this is how good an actor Oscar Isaac is. He is such a good actor. You can clearly tell when he's Mark and when he's Steven. Even yeah, if they're not changes. talking. His entire posture changes. Yeah. Like it's it's it. it's so subtle, but it's so obvious that it's it just makes it so much more believable and so good. He he's actually like such such a good actor i mean i first saw him in star wars obviously but i've seen him in like a couple things since then and he's he's delivered every time Mm -hmm. he's very good like and this is another time when he's absolutely delivered like i mean i know he said that it's it's difficult to play a character um like moon knight because of the multiple personalities because it's difficult to to jump between them like so quickly Mm mm-hmm which but, like, is further, insane. further on in the show, we see it more, and it it works. Like it, it does it's work. Good. But it's like it's like also if it's so tiring for him, I always wonder how it is for people who actually have um, DID. I think is what mm-hmm. it's called. Um, and it's like it's really sad. <laughs> it is. It's it's sad because. You know, and we like, see and especially that. because, like, especially with Mark and Steven's storyline, like, you see a lot of Steven's more tragic side, and then Mark, like, trying to protect him. Yeah, like the entire time, and, Mark has been like, "Just let me, let me take over, because I'm gonna save yeah. us. Let me take over, because I'm gonna, you know." When they're when they're looking in the mirror after, like they found out that they lost the scarab and steven's like i don't like this like i can barely move like i i don't like this and mark's like it's fine just breathe through it i was like oh my god i just god. <laughs> i know we're like jumping the gun but i just cannot wait for us to talk more about like their their relationship it is it is like at the beginning, I was like, wow, Mark is such a dick. I hate him. <laughs> Mark is, like, a terrible person. Steven's amazing. He's so cute. But then, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, later on, as the characters develop more. I but you even start to see that in this episode. Longer. like, But, yeah, you even see this in this episode. Yeah. Like you were saying, like, especially closer to the end when, mm-hmm. Mark, when Mark is, like, it's okay. And he's kind of taking care of Steven. Yeah. Um, uh, well, well, I had a brain fart. <laughs> no, Listen, um, I've been having so many of those lately, like yesterday. <laughs> okay, when I was watching, when I was watching, okay, this episode, I had to stop it and rewind it because even though I was watching it, I did not take in a single piece of information <laughs> that came on the screen. <laughs> I was literally sitting there and I'm like, wait, what happened? And it was funny because it was at an ex- going on. It was at the scene when um Steven goes to the to the locker and is like, hey, I'm like, I'm like Steven, maybe Mark. Um, and the guy was like, Yeah, I I know you, and then shows him and then Conchu's there and he's like, give Mark back the body, blah blah blah. And Mark's like, Don't do it, Steven. Um <laughs> I literally had to rewind that because I was like <laughs> something just happened and I did not I do what not know is what is going on yeah um Harlow in this episode I still don't understand his whole like concept and I can I just say I love the fact that when Stephen was talking to him Stephen was even pointing out the whole plot holes in his whole scheme where he's yeah. like, so, so you're just you, you're gonna kill innocent children, like they're yeah. they're children. You're gonna like, you're gonna you're gonna kill someone for for just having a thought and not for actually. Yeah, or like you're gonna kill thought. someone for something that they're gonna do in thirty years. And like even because like even Stephen was like at one point I think he even said like I think about killing my boss all the time, but I don't actually do it. So you're gonna kill me for just having the thought. Yeah, and. It it just it like really puts into perspective how smart Steven is because he's even like this guy is like people think that I'm crazy. No, like this guy is off his rocker. But like, here's he's the thing. Nuts. Okay. Going back to like the Mark Mark and Steven is that they're both smart, yeah, but in different ways. They are. Yeah. 
And I think we mentioned that in the previous episode where I said, like, Stephen actually is a really smart guy. He doesn't come across as a smart pe- person and people think that he uh, isn't, but he really is. Yeah. And so is Mark, because like when I first watched the show, I was like, oh, yeah, Stephen's the brains, Mark's the brawn, clearly. <laughs> but now I'm like, well, they're both smart in like different ways. Yeah, for which sure. is they're... a really cool balance between the two characters. Yeah. Um, but like the, the whole Harlow, like his whole thing is like, is, is he just at, like looking for revenge against Conchu? Like, I don't know. Like, see, like we talked about it last week. We weren't sure about his motivations, which makes him like, in my opinion, a really flat villain. Like yeah. I like to know right off the bat what their motivations are. I don't like to find out at the end because I'm like, why, why are you doing this? This is mm-hmm. the stupidest thing I've well, ever and, like, even though in this episode we get, like, a smidgen more of it, I'm still confused about, like, like why? Why would you try to bring back a deity that is essentially going to kill off half the population? Like, like what makes, what makes bringing her to life, like, like, I just don't get it, you know? Yeah, I just, I, yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. And I don't understand why he specifically wants to do this. Like, and I, I, I get that he, like, he said in the, in this episode that he was, um, Con, um, Conchu's first avatar. So maybe a part of him well, the, is. Well, the avatar before Mark. Yeah, before Mark. Um, maybe a part of him is looking for a re- revenge, but I'm still like, if you're going to look for revenge, why are you going to... What's the whole point of... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I tried to hold it in and it just made it worse. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm leaving that in the episode. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I tried. <laughs> I was trying to wait for you to finish talking. <laughs> no, it's well, fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, anyways, the whole point of this is that I still don't understand what uh, Harlow's whole motivation is. And, like, why specifically with Mark? I, I Yeah, I agree, like... 1000 percent like okay and like is it i don't know if it's just me but like it seems like they're trying to make harlow seem this like nice nice guy to his community mm-hmm. but to me it just comes off as like creepy like where someone's overcompensating with their niceness like okay when when he opens the car door and and steven falls out and he's like on the walkie-talkie and he has the walkie-talkie and he's like i was just trying to understand your situation and now that i understand it let's be friends and he takes him through the like whole community where they're like we try to learn at least three languages and we teach each other and we're like all bffs for life like you know like i found Mm -hmm. that so creepy i didn't find that like and it it's a cult it's a cult it's a cult. If we're just going to put a name to what that whole organization is, it's a cult. For sure. Like, they grow their own vegetables. They live in the whole community there. They ha- they worship this. Every time he walks by, they bow. Well, like, it's it's a cult. Yeah, but, like, the, the, the thing that I especially don't like about this is the fact that the there is an Egyptian religion that worships these gods Mm -hmm. (laughs) that doesn't go to the extremes that these people do yeah it just see like they're definitely more on the extreme end of the spectrum um and it like usually when you're on that extreme end of the spectrum and you have one person who is um the organizer of everything and people worship him like he is the god that's a cult mm-hmm. and it's people people die because he says 
<laughs> go and die <laughs> like right and he like the way that he also judges people when he does that whole judgment thing by holding their hands and the 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 scales mm-hmm. go if if they turn red you're automatically dead even though you know and we saw that in the first episode when that older lady came up to him and um she said i've never had a, an evil thought in my mind my entire life and he said well just because it didn't happen now it's not going to happen later and because of that you die and that Mm -hmm. kind of like brought back to the whole like steven questioning him like so you're gonna judge children who are still learning through life lessons and if they do something in 30 years right that could potentially change between now and then depending on the life path that they pick you're gonna just kill them exactly yeah yeah. So moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now we have like Stephen and Mark in the little village and and uh, what's his face? I forget his name already. Harlow? Harlow. Harlow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Harlow was like, hey, you should try the lentil soup because we know you're vegan. And I don't know if you remember earlier in the episode, Stephen made a comment where he's like, you tried meat one time and you go completely off your rocker. <laughs> that scene reminded me of that. And oh my God, I was like trying not to laugh. But to make it even better, this is the part where like Layla pops up again. Like yeah. I, I love her so She's much. She's so good. And I like, Oh, I can't wait to like rewatch the and, later, like, especially on... in the later episodes for yeah. sure. Oh my, oh god. my god, I love her. I think absolutely she absolutely love her. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it. Later. Yeah, I love her, and that is the point: is that I absolutely love her. Um, so she basically comes and saves like Stephen. Yeah, and she's like, "You got to wear the suit," and he's like, "What suit?" And I don't get he's it. He's like, he's like literally freaking out. She's like, "It's okay." okay well like figure this out like oh yeah but I even then like I think by the end of the episode she definitely realizes okay s- like something more is happening here and I I yeah. don't know what right now but I think I need to like help him figure it out yeah and like can we talk about how smart she is I mean we've talked about Stephen and Mark's yeah. being super smart but okay so the jackal comes to the door right yeah Steven's like, can't you see it it's like this big like dog like thing and she's like there's nothing no. there he gets tackled out the window finally figures out how to put on a suit mark's like what the hell is that and he's like you said a suit so i'm wearing a suit and it's like a three suit all... okay hold up sorry go ahead, sorry go ahead sorry finish my thought. <laughs> otherwise i will forget and never come back to it um and then layla meets him down there he's all like being thrown around by the jackal but she picks up like a i don't know what it was it was like paint or like something so that she could see it she like yeah, could she throws it, it at it. it yeah yeah she i don't know what's moving um <laughs> she freaking throws it at him um and she uh she's able to like see the jackal and like with that like without any hesitation is like trying to fight this thing <laughs> i don't know about you but i'd be crying in the I corner would be too. far I'd away be like, i'd be running the in the opposite direction is that exactly <laughs> Um, can we talk about the glorious um, Mr. Nice the suit? suit? The suit. <laughs> I love the suit. As much as I love Stephen's Moon Knight suit. You mean I Mark's just, Moon Knight suit? Yeah, Mark's Moon Knight suit. I just love Stephen's suit that much more. Because it's, he was like, you said suit. I put on a suit. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> Mark's like, Mark's like standing there like, what the hell? This is not right. And Mark's, and Stephen's like, you said put on a suit, so I put on a suit. Just but he like, looks so good in that suit, and it's just he does. Chantel, I do. I See, have to tell okay, you, I here's have the thing. I have a weakness for men in suits. I'm. I'm. Not, I okay. Everybody does. Literally, know, every like, everybody does. But here's the thing for me. Right. Mm-hmm. For me, my attractiveness level to a man is based on shoulder to hip ratio. Okay. Yeah, Henry, <laughs> I know it's Henry very Cavill weird. is like up here. Right. No, like, like, like you have to have the perfect shoulder to hip ratio for okay. me to like you. Like, okay, he has a really good shoulder to hip ratio um, <laughs> in Enola Holmes. Okay, yes, but 
he doesn't necessarily have a good shoulder to hip ratio in the witcher and that's just because of costuming because i don't like it when guys are super super broad at the top and then super skinny at the waist they walk around like this like like i don't know if he's seen the meme where it's like chris evans is a dorito oh yeah (laughs) yeah i don't like that but i'll still find them attractive can i just say on another note chris evans for me it's ultimate is the shoulder to hit and he's got he froze what did you say did I? Well, I was just gonna say, Chris Evans just was announced as the sexiest man alive in 2022, which is fair for him. Yeah, which is fair. <laughs> I, I get that. But but here's the thing. My point okay. is, Oscar Isaac has a really good shoulder to hip ratio. Especially He's not if you bulky. Look, especially if you look at it from the back and like only yeah. shoulder, like his upper body, nothing else. That's an attractive man see, right there. Here's the thing. He, and you see it in the, the last shot when he's in Egypt and he's shirtless. He's not an overly buff guy. He's a fit guy, but he's not like overly fit. You know what I mean? And yeah, we don't. I, I don't like it when guys are so muscular. See, here's it here's just, the thing. I don't, I don't mind it. The thing that annoys me is when shows and movies make it unhealthy because a lot of times in order to get your muscles to look like that you have to be dehydrated in order to get your muscles to pop like that and a lot of times in order to get rehydrated you have to end up in the hospital to get rehydrated because you have to get rehydrated through an IV drip so that's where I do not yeah no I agree but in a lot of shows and a lot of movies for me, the most attractive like characters aren't the ones that are super, super buff, but the ones that have a really good shoulder to hip ratio. <laughs> like it doesn't Shut matter your level of fit. Scientific. Like But you're sh- no, like 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 you don't understand if you've got a really good back. I get a it. really good black wow, a really good back. Yeah. You are like the most attractive person. I get like it. I don't know if okay, if you look at all of my favorite characters, which um I didn't realize till recently, but if you look at all of my favorite characters, they all mm-hmm. have my ideal and perfect like shoulder to hip <laughs> ratio. Okay. And they became my favorite character when I looked at their backs. That's just weird, isn't it? So what we're saying is I oh, know sorry, I thought I saw a spider on my wall, <laughs> but it's just a hole. <laughs> um what we're what we just discovered is um in order for you to have a chance with Chantel, you need to have the perfect shoulder to hip ratio. Like um Hayden Christensen and um um Ian McGregor, they both have really good shoulder to hip ratios. Okay. So that that's like that's <laughs> that's Chantel's like so that's Favorite. my take on this. Oscar <laughs> Isaac has a really good shoulder to hip ratio, and that's what's important, okay? None okay. of the rest of the stuff, but his really good shoulder <laughs> to hip ratio. All right. Um, I wanted to just say he just looked really good in the suit. But then he does. When, he's, when he's fighting the, what's it called? The jackal? Yeah. Yeah. So when he's fighting the jackal, right, he takes off. The, the jacket, jacket, yeah, and he rolls, and he rolls up his sleeve. sleeve, and he's like, "All right, let's do this. Let's do this dance." Okay, but here's here's a question though, right? Yeah. So okay, the ahead. suit gets put on um, through Conchu's like magic or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. So theoretically, wouldn't he like not be able to take the jacket off because it's a part of like Conchu? But or I mean, if he does take the jacket off, wouldn't it be like he can't take it off and it just be reabsorbed into the suit? <laughs> These are the things I think about. I'm sorry. Um Chantel just like broke me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Sign, sign over my head. <laughs> <laughs> sorry these are the things i think about anyways i know i know i i think of weird things don't have to answer that but that was just something that i thought of when i saw that scene this i was is, like this is what, what i have to, to deal jacket? with 
<laughs> this is what I have to deal it's with. It's like every day, even at work, even at work, when we're at work, I'm like, Sally, let me rock your world by asking this really obscure question that takes a lot of brain power to answer. <laughs> um, well, but no, yeah, I'm not like, smart enough to answer your questions. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. That's why I'm asking them. Um, but okay, moving on. Eventually, okay. yeah. the right, Stephen gives up gives up to Mark mm-hmm. because he realizes he can't defeat the jackal. And yeah. he's like, okay, Mark, you take over. And then Mark does the whole, like, I don't want to wear this suit. And he does the whole... Sorry, I'm hitting things. He does the whole, like, magic, like, magical girl, like, transformation, right? And turns into, like... <laughs> Why night. magical girl? That's... Because, okay, here's the thing. That's what I pictured when I saw that was the... um um. I don't know if you ever watched the uh, cartoon so you... Winks. Oh, Winks, yes. That and the whole Sailor like Sailor Moon, and Sailor Moon, like that's what I pictured. Okay, when I saw the um, when I saw the transition, that's what I pictured. So, um, yeah, he had a magical girl transformation. Um, okay, came out in like an equally sexy suit, but like in a different way, you know. Yes. Um, and then like absolutely kicked ass. <laughs> he literally like skewered the jackal. Yeah, on a, on a tower, and then thing. he did that whole sexy thing where he grabbed the like his little half moon like knife thingy like in the midair like yeah that was super sexy of him <laughs> just have to say just have to say yeah that was really cool and then him. that whole um argument with him and steven and in steven. the mirror that that was, was like i was sad yeah and like i felt i felt that like oscar isaac did an like an amazing job with with that scene because you could feel the emotions from from both steven and mark mm-hmm like yeah. you could feel the emotions, you could feel they were completely different emotions. Like you know, like it was. Oh, that scene was so well done. Mm-hmm. It was. And, it was amazing. Um, we didn't mention this before, but back in the beginning, when um, Stephen was getting fired, um, I mean the the fact that the I guess it was like his boss or whatever, the head of security, the fact that he it, it was the head. Of, it was HR. HR okay so the head of HR um gave him a brochure to go and and for like a therapist to seek help that's like which okay no no offense okay just gonna put that out there no offense but okay I don't know of a single employer that would actually do that a lot of a lot of the yeah, like, a lot of the employers that I know of are like if you need help get help but they do more of that thing where they're like, here's like, here's like a phone number that you can call if you need help. Mm-hmm. Not like here's a brochure and we have a partnership with this hospital yeah. to help you to help you out. You know what I mean? Like a lot of um a lot of employers will have, I mean, at least speaking from the experience that I've had in Canada, mm-hmm. not not in the States, because I don't <laughs> know about I don't know about the States guys, sorry, but they will have insurance where you can go in the and seek out like mm-hmm. mental assistance if you need it yeah um for any varying types of like mental illnesses um but you only have a certain amount of um like uh like sometimes they'll only cover like, half of it yeah they're the, it'll only cover a certain amount of like treatments and certain type of treatments yeah so i don't know i was like that that would be great if it was real yeah <laughs> like that would be i mean also this is set in the uk so who knows maybe the uk have better it's different like, yeah maybe the uk have better um ways of helping people with mental illness but also at the same time i was watching that and i was like what employer has a partnership with a hospital to help out like their employees and also how bad must you be as an employer to need a <laughs> partnership with a mental like with a right with a, like yeah. an, an, an institution like that yeah or okay because this is what I think about sorry third thing third option option okay. number three okay like does this does this museum have a partnership with this institution because they're trying to promote better mental um health and it's not just within the museum but it's within the entire community these I are the questions I have. <laughs> I would hope it's the third one because I think everyone 
it's now starting to become more common of the talks behind mental health Mm -hmm. but i don't think we're there yet i don't think i think there's still a taboo with mental health like oh we're not supposed to talk about that but like no let's talk about it and it's very much like i mean i've said this a lot but um it's very much of my opinion that every single person every single person should have a therapist (laughs) that they go to talk to because I feel I feel like there's a lot of issues that people have that they don't realize that they need assistance with Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like regardless of whether you think you have healthy mental health or not I feel like it's a good idea for every single person to have um, a therapist yeah that's just my opinion (laughs) I think, and this is like stretch. We're getting like a little political here, but we're getting um, really deep. We are. <laughs> so, in in Canada, we do have health care that is covered by the government. Um, I mean, it's it's also why our taxes are so high. But I think having a therapist be covered by um, in in Ontario, it's OHIP, the Ontario Health Card protection but um, here's the thing protection. OHIP, OHIP only goes until so you're far. you're a certain age which is I think 24 25 like right around our age no so, you know what Chantel the day I turned 21 and I booked an appointment to get my eyes checked they told me that I had to pay and I was like what do you mean I have to pay yeah I am um, yeah, I'm OHIP only covers until 21 and I'm like okay but I'm I, sh- I should know that, but I'm lucky because I my parents have good insurance, so I'm on I'm on their insurance until a certain age. Yeah. Anyways, sorry, we're just like going off. Track we're going off on like... the on the healthcare system. But to be fair, I would still rather pay um, the taxes than have to pay the entirety of any um, medical yeah. bill on my I, own. I gotta say, like the the it's in Canada, we are very lucky in order to. Um, go through childbirth um as a woman is covered um but in the states have you seen their medical bills in order to Mm -hmm. deliver a child Mm -hmm. i know i've seen it like what like like the lower side of that would be about thirty thousand dollars from what i've seen american it's it I, I I don't know how you guys, do. I feel really, like, if there was a way for you to come to Canada, I think you'd Yeah, still, and like, you know, and like, yeah, like, it. like, which makes you think, okay, sorry, just have this thought. All the people <laughs> in Moon Knight who are either on that bus or in that car that got totaled because it hit, it hit him, right? Yeah. It hit, it hit Steven while he was in his suit, mm-hmm. right? All those people had to have been injured as like even a little bit like especially whip- the people in that you car. Would have, you would have had to go to the hospital, okay? Cuz you would not have been okay. So all yeah. those poor people now are in debt. <laughs> I mean, I don't know again, we don't know how the health system works in um in the UK, but Yeah. Oh yeah, in the UK. I was sorry. I was thinking states. <laughs> but I mean, I think oh, now but I have still. to pull it because I'm curious. Does the UK have universal health care hello there we go Does hello the, uh, <laughs> sorry i was talking to my phone they do they have free public health care through the um national health service oh uk for the win so those people are fine we don't care about them anymore they're fine <laughs> they all live. but still we're very concerned we're very concerned. Yes, yes. Um, anyways. anyways, after that rant, um, we got a little bit deep and a little bit deep. <laughs> deep into healthcare. My point, my point was, I think everybody should have a therapist, and I don't know of any employer that actually um, does that, um, at least in Canada. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> so the end of the episode, right after yeah. um, Mark breaks the mirror. Um, I guess he blacks out, Kanju takes over, and he finds himself in Egypt. Yeah, well, I think, I don't think Mark blacked out. I think 
Mark like kind of put Stephen underneath so that Stephen wouldn't know what he was doing or try to come to the surface again. Mm -hmm. And then I think, I think that's what happened. I don't know uh, what Mark did because if you noticed, he was originally sitting in front of the mirror and his hand was like all bloody, the one that was holding the, the bottle. Um, and then well, the mirror was cracked, so I think he punched the mirror, which would make sense if it's Mark trying to keep control and um, yeah, not let Stephen come to the to the forefront. Um, and then um, he goes and opens the curtains rather dramatically. I always find it funny when <laughs> character curtains like that because it's always super dramatic. So he opens he opens the curtain really dramatically, and you see the uh, the pyramids there. Which um not gonna lie made me super jealous. I know. You I, I wanna see the periods. I would love to. Um, really badly. Yeah. So that was, it was <laughs> super like I literally I literally saw him. Like I know this is my second time watching it, but he opens the curtain and I see the pyramids. And I'm like, I wish I was there right now and not having to deal with all my school crap. <laughs> like <laughs> Oh, to be anywhere but here right now, <laughs> dealing with school. Literally, Chantel on a daily basis to me. I know. I'm always like, I always tell the self, <laughs> I'm like, the amount of willpower it took for me not to drop out of school. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh god, it's You're like I already put so much money into it. I can't back down now. I yeah. I'm like, I can't. Oh god. It's even worse because once I'm done, once I'm done this program, I'm doing one more program. Wow. Okay. And also I decided I'm going to try to get this, um, a certificate that would help me get jobs in my field. Um, so that's even more school. Well, I mean, in the world that we live in now, you want a good paying job. You gotta. Okay. But no matter what. Or how good of a paying job I get, I'm never going to be able to afford anything. <laughs> no, that's that's literally. Can I just say, sorry, side rant. And I, in my interview the other day, she asked me what motivates me, and mm-hmm. a lot of the time they're like, "Never bring in money. Don't don't say anything about money." And I'm so I'm there, and I'm like, "Well, you know, I like to surround myself around friends." And I'm like, and then I kind of just went like. You know what? I got to be honest. It's money. Like in the economy that we're living in right now, who wouldn't say money? And she laughed and she's like, you are the most honest person I've ever interviewed. (laughs) I'm like, listen, we're not going to dance around this topic because it's it's, like, that's just the way life works. Yeah. And it's like, don't say money. And you like, you I mean, know. they always say they always say money doesn't buy happiness. But when, in your experience, has money not bought happiness? <laughs> I just spent so much money, Chantel. Okay, I'm aware. Just I did too. On a deposit <laughs> for a trip to Disney World next year. I I'm the I'm the most busy. magical, I mean, happiest place on earth. I mean, okay, like I did, I've, I've been to Disney World before. Yes. I know how much it is. How do you rate the movie or the show? How do you rate um, episode two? Okay, last week I said what, six? I think I'm going to rate. Seven, I thought. Oh, okay. I don't remember. I don't Honestly, know. who, I don't know. I think I'm going to rate this one a seven. I, um. 7.5. I'll say that. 7.5. I think I'm gonna rate it a. Oh, I don't know. This is hard. <laughs> Let me for a second. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna put that music in the background. Okay. I um. Okay. I'm gonna rate it. I think I'm gonna rate it a seven point five as well. Okay. Um. Yeah. Only, but only because. I have to say this, but only because of what I know is gonna happen in later episodes. That's fair. Um, I'm going to rate it a 7.5 because I am still very confused about Harlow's motivations. And um, I really liked the action. It's, it was more of an action episode. This, uh, I mean, not as much, but still. Yeah. It was, and it was more I do, I do like how we saw 
how we saw more of the characters themselves. Yeah, like, for sure. Especially Stephen and Mark. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to say 7.5. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, as of this recording, episode one has officially dropped. Um, no, that I shouldn't say that. We, you already have like the first three episodes. Yeah. Um, anyways, <laughs> but the day that we're recording this is the day that episode one drops. So, <laughs> well, I'll just clarify that. Um, anyways. Um, follow us on uh, Instagram and TikTok at Silver Magic Studio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, like, share, subscribe. Um, yeah, if you're if well, you're listening if you're listening to this on um, Anchor, Anchor yes. thank you. Um, we also have a YouTube, so you can come and if you want to, I guess, come and watch this episode with our yes. beautiful faces on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, thank you <gasps> no, much. you know, what, Chantel? sorry, I didn't say this to you, but there's a feature on Anchor now that if you upload the video, it'll play as a video on Spotify. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, if you're doing that, then cool. <laughs> um, if you're right on our YouTube, you can watch all of our um, games. other videos. We have and games, vlogs. We have some vlogs. Um, yeah, and if you're if you're on Spotify and you're watching us, or if you're just listening to us, um, come on over to our YouTube. We have lots more stuff here. Yes, please, please. <laughs> um. Anyways, thank you for listening slash watching, and until next time, toodles. toodles.